So here we are. And this should not be a big mystery because insurance is just another type of what? Contract. Contract. Good. So we spent three chapters talking about it and we slipped it in in other ways too. Right? We talked about warranties and how they relate to contracts. And now just a special kind of contract. Still has to have all the elements of a contract, but it has a particular purpose in mind. And as the first bullet says there, these contracts are all about transferring or allocating risk. So there's a risk that certain things might happen to you. Name some of the things that could happen to you. Death. Death. That one's for certain. There's a 100% chance that that's going to happen. The question is what? When and how. Right? So some people, that's their whole life job is just trying to figure out when and how you're going to die. Right? And sounds kind of morbid. But what kind of things are they going to take into account? Your health, your age, your lifestyle, what you do for a living, what, what's happened in the rest of your family. Are you going to have things that your relatives have had? What else? Number of children you have. Right. So there's lots of different factors that could affect when and how you die. Where you live at, even. Like, where was I recently? Downtown Chicago or something. I bet the life expectancy of somebody who lives in Chicago is shorter. Especially if you're a pedestrian. Oh, my. <laughs> oh, my goodness, man. First of all, everybody there drives like idiots. Sorry if you're from there. And everybody who walks just wa stand. I saw people standing in the middle of the road on their cell phone in traffic. I'm like, why are you? You're going to get killed. They just went around them. So it seems like life expectancy might be a little lower in those type of situations. Or if you're uh, you window washing skyscrapers or something, I don't know what it is, but it might have, that might affect the risk. So as you have these different types of risks that you might die, that you might have poor health, that your house might burn down, whatever it is, um, you could save up a pile of money and then tell somebody where it's at after you go, right? <laughs> I mean, that's one way to do it. Stuff it in your mattress. Another way, though, is to give your money to someone else with an agreement that they'll give it to someone else when that risk occurs, right? So, and, you know, we keep talking about risk, risk, risk. Well, what's it risk according to the chapter? It's prediction concerning potential loss, unknown and unknown factors, there's even risks that are unknown. Like we can only really anticipate the risks we can know about, if that makes sense. Like it's hard to anticipate risks we wouldn't know about. Right, At, you know, once the first asteroid hits us, after that we'll probably be really aware. But until then we're like, ah, that can't hit. that'll be a policy, be asteroid policy. Probably won't last very long after that, but once they start hitting, According to all the movies I've seen, at least. <laughs> but um, is it on this slide? Yeah, there it is. It kind of came up surprise on the bottom there. You know, terrorism is an example of that. I mean, think about before 9-11, people who owned tall buildings didn't necessarily anticipate that something was going to happen. Uh, and there was a provision in policies that says all risk insurance and all risk really isn't all risk. I mean, there's a risk that aliens could abduct you. Maybe there's not. I don't know. But, I mean, it, we don't know because if you'd been abducted, you wouldn't be here today, right? So, uh, anyway. So there's a risk that some things are going to happen. Uh, others are risks we don't know about till they happen, and then we start contemplating them, and then we try, you know, then we try to say, hey, you're, you're in a tall building, therefore you need to have this type of protection. Then if some other type of terrorism happens, I mean, Think of things that are happening today in the news. Is there any type of risk that you can anticipate that maybe really hasn't happened a whole lot yet? <laughs> well, I don't. I mean, are we thinking about going to war with Don't be spreading that rumor. <laughs> I mean, war is a risk, right? I mean, there's got to be insurance for that. I mean, I mean, depending on what part of the country, and there's a good chance that you may or may not be at war at any particular time. But yeah, yeah, I mean, I think that's I think something that's happening in the news today. 
Yeah, that one. That's one that could happen. Nuclear war. Right. Yeah, I mean, think about key employees and how somebody might, depending on what part of the world you're in. Uh, was recently in the news they were talking about um, convicting some pirates around Somalia who were, you know, arg, right? You know, who were stealing uh, people off of ships and then holding them for ransom. You know, depending on where you're shipping, this could be a real problem, right? I guess they decided to attack a a battleship. <laughs> Oops. And so, so now that now the defense is we really never were able to, right? We we fired on them and they returned some heavy fire. And uh, then we <laughs> didn't mean it. We were just start saying hi, hello. Oops. This thing just went off. They apparently had rocket launchers and all kinds of stuff. But yeah, you got to watch who you pick on. <laughs> so there's that. What other kind of? I mean, think about things that are happening in the news that you just would not have think could have happened. What's that? Poison in the mail. Right, mm -hmm. getting things through the mail. Uh, you know, like the, there was a time where anthrax was not something you used would get. Right. Um, even today, when I was coming in, they were talking about WikiLeaks. Wik WikiLeaks. Have you heard about this? Yes. Right. Awesome. What gets so upset? I don't like Oprah. So there. She's done after this year. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I thought you were talking about Oprah when I came in. Yeah, we were. Oprah yeah. gave away more cards. I know. I she was talking. She gave away iPads. One of my best friends is on that show. Oh, wow. I, I'm kidding. I love her, but I wanted to be there. Yeah. So there's a risk that Oprah might give you something, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> I'll take that. But that'd be a good. <laughs> um, so, so WikiLeaks, a site where they kind of put um, information out there, and the latest one was supposedly some uh, embarrassing um, governmental information about other governments and how, how we might characterize leaders of other countries. So, but if you think about it, even, even when I was a kid, my dad said, don't put anything in writing you don't want the entire stinking world to hear or see. And it's true. But there's a risk with that, right? I mean, you really could affect your reputation or your business if that kind of information gets out. The Army um, private who leaked it is actually in custody. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's not good. It's not good. Well, I mean, I, I thought of it because of terrorism. Like, now, there's, now they're saying that WikiLeaks may be terrorists because they're basically doing things that would damage the government. Uh, interesting. So all of this is about managing the different type of risks that we can't always anticipate, but as they happen, we we do. So these terms should not whoops should not be unfamiliar to you. You probably heard of an insurance policy before. Everyone has one, or has had one, or needs one, right? What kind of insurance do you have? Car, home, life, health. Yeah. So. These are, are these policies, they're all contracts. The premium is the consideration that you need for a contract. Remember the four elements of a contract? What are they? Offer. Acceptance. Which is? Consideration. Agreement, that first element. <laughs> consideration is the second one, yes. What's next? Good time to review. What? Capacity, yeah. Capacity is the other one. And then the last one, legality. You you got to have an insurance policy that's for a legal purpose. All right, so make sure you know about those four elements. Uh, an underwriter, we were talking earlier about those that determine risk, allocate risk. That's uh, what they do in, in the putting terms into insurance policies. And then we've covered agency. Remember that chapter? What chapter was that? Yes, 17. Uh, so in that chapter, we talk about an agent being somebody who rep represents a principal as they deal with third party. So in this case, an insurance agent represents who? The insurance company. Yeah, a lot of times, if you hear the term agent, they do. I mean, an agent is an agent, right? They could represent whoever is the principal, but in some cases, that's the insurance company. In other cases, they might be a broker, right? They they can. Uh, work for you to get you the best deal. I can't help but think of the two big players on TV, the 
what is Flo, the annoying woman? I mean, I guess it depends on whether you, some people like her, some people don't like her so much. I know, I think that's where she falls. Or um, the lizard, Geico, right? You know, all about finding you the best deal, right? You know? Okay. The guy who's like, I'm a hot, I'm a teenage girl, smashes it. No, he's really a hot teenage girl. <laughs> he's like, I'm a really hot teenage girl. And then the dude runs Isn't it State Farm? Mayhem, yeah. Yeah, it's mayhem. Mayhem. <laughs> they're all on YouTube. They're pretty funny. Um, if you watch Hulu, anybody ever use Hulu? He, usually one of their commercials will come on and they've got all his heads and he's all the different man. They're, you can click on him. It's pretty funny. Um, so, insurable interest. In order to in have insurance, you have to have an insurable interest in something. Like, for example, my family has an insurable interest in my life. I have an insurable interest in my car. Um, you all could not take out an insurance policy on me. I mean, you couldn't pull your money together hoping that I die and you collect. Right? How, how can employers take like, how, Why not? You're like, I want to do this. Well, Right, key employees. So you could you could have key employee insurance because you're going to suffer a loss if you lose that key employee. And sometimes there's a lot of money tied up in training that person and investing like in the, them. The key employee. Like well, you know, key employee I think is kind of a legal term, you know, like we say reasonable person. Like what is a key employee? Uh Walmart got in trouble for that. Walmart was yeah, so insuring all their employees, <laughs> right? Of yeah, so the greeter had a uh, $100,000 insurance policy. Now I'm paraphrasing Walmart, please forgive me. Um, but, you know, in some cases, not, not, not the greeters aren't key employees. That's not how I mean it. But, you know, when the family didn't have enough money to bury the person, but, the, but Walmart was able to collect on it, this is, this is a problem, right? So, yeah, key, key employee insurance is another insurable interest you, you may have. And then, like, like I was just mentioning, there's different types of insurable interest you have. You might have it on life. You might have it on property. Um, I was going to have it on my wife's uh, wedding ring. Uh, however, I thought she'd find out it's not real, so I couldn't have it appraised. <laughs> Sorry, honey. Hope you never listen to this. Um, so we'll talk about appraisal in a minute. <laughs> I know one of my students will run into my wife one day and say, oh, let me see your ring. Oh, that's fake. <laughs> that's fake, by the way. It was, it was a difficult financial time for me. So, All right. Um, so if insurance is a contract, it's governed by the general principles of contract law. It's regulated by the state, which is true. You have to be licensed to sell insurance. Um, you have to comply with state law. Um, notice that it says an application is an offer here, and then later it's going to say the application can become part of the insurance contract. Yeah, can become. So often insurance companies will say, whatever you said in the application becomes part of our agreement. So then later if you say something that wasn't entirely accurate, and why might you say something inaccurate or dishonest on your end? Right, right. There's something going on you don't want them to know about because you want it to be covered. You've had a like bad driving issues. history. What's that? Like money issues. Right. You don't want them to know about that. Um, maybe you say you're older when you're really younger or you're younger when you're older. Uh, it has to be supported by consideration because that's an element of contract. And the parties, the insurance company as well as the insured, need to have capacity. So all these provisions have their own slide. So you don't have to keep writing all these down. That's what that little arrow means. More coming. Um, but we'll talk about the application. When insurance is effective. It's not necessarily effective the date it's signed or the, the date you apply for it. Um, and that has made a difference in the past as to whether something's covered or not. Talking about specific provisions and clauses. There's a, a exhibit in your chapter, 23-3. What's 
provisions. Yeah, so provisions and clauses. So besides this on the slide, you can write Exhibit 23.3, because there's going to be a question about that. Should be on the left hand bottom side. 682. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. So we'll go we'll get to that. Um, language about interpreting the provisions of an insurance contract, how insurance can be canceled, our rights and duties under contract, just like other contracts we've talked about, and then some of the defenses, which should be a no-brainer. What not that if you can't answer it, you don't have a brain, but I mean, basically, what do you think an insurance company, because I'm kind of jaded, I feel like insurance companies really make money by not paying claims. Yeah. I know, it's shocking, but what kind of reasons do you think they might come up with for not wanting to pay you? Because it, was not con it wasn't in the contract. Right, that they it's a contract, it's not in the contract, it's not covered. Your house was destroyed by flood, you don't have flood insurance. Uh, it was really destroyed by the hurricane before the flood, so it's not covered that way. Yeah. A friend of mine, she got in an accident when it was raining out. She got cut off by a truck and hit the guardrail, and they measured her treads, and they said her treads were worn, so they didn't pay. Wow, I've never heard that before. What's that? Yeah, well, maybe they didn't want to pay that. Yeah. Everybody go change your tires. Oh, mama's, mama's house was, Are you going to pay for them? No, no, I'm just going to say crazy things. When my mother's house was broken into. I thought you said blown up. It was blown up. The, whoever broke into it inadvertently somehow blew the house up. Inadvertently, accidentally blew her house up. She used to testify against a lot of people. Ah. Uh, so. She in witness protection now? No. Because we're recording. I don't want to talk about her. But the insurance company fought that, saying that because it was a hazard of her occupation. <laughs> her occupation was <laughs> testifying in other. Oh, and had that, as a nurse, in a you you should risk that somebody's going to break in your yeah, house and uh, blow it up. Losing. Well, hey, nurses out there, watch out. Right. Yeah. That's crazy. That's pretty crazy. I mean, I had I've had lots of death threats against me. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? I know, but stay away from the windows. Um, They're usually only after the exam. Like, yeah, only after final grades are posted. No, the Michigan militia, I'm on their wanted list. Really? If any of you are in, like, really? I better go look that up. <laughs> cool. Is there a reward? That's yeah. crazy. Well, my grandpa, he was a prison guard. I had him He might know me. T T H O M. T O M. I was big, oh, huge, tall, six yeah. foot seven, and he's huge. Uh -huh. But anyway, he had a, he. I always never understood when I was little why he always had a PO box. And so, because he was like, they're not ship that bomb to the post office. <laughs> <laughs> they're not gonna yeah. Yeah. Like, oh, that makes sense. Yeah, I've had some close run-ins before. I, I was a prosecutor for five years, and everybody said they wanted to kill me. So. And he worked with. He was, uh, he, was he, he was in our so yeah. Was crazy oh, well, yeah. I mean, I I did that too. I was in the I told you that psychiatric yeah. facility. Yeah. Not that I was. I mean, I was <laughs> there doing other things, and that's right. And then um, what else? I did something else that caused people <coughs> not like me very much. Teach. No. What else? <laughs> what else was it? I did something else. I don't know. Yeah. It'll come to me later. Um, cancellation. Uh, you know, sometimes people are concerned that if they don't pay a premium, the insurance get canceled, or if they need to get out of insurance contract, can they? Um, oh, yeah, we already got to the end of this, didn't we? Sorry, we got off a little bit there. Um, so the application, as I mentioned, may become part of the insurance contract because the insurance company has concerns about misstatements or misrepresentations in the policy. And later, we're going to talk about the anti-lapse provision, or in the, um, somebody help me, 23.3, first. Anti-lapse, arbitration, incontestability. Incontestability clause. Incontestability clause saying that, you know, after a certain point, the insurance company shouldn't be able to go back and say you said something wrong on your application. So if you make it part of the insurance contract, then it could be a breach of contract later. 
All right, and effective date, you know, we mentioned that um, it, it depends on when the uh, contract is actually binding. For example, I, I mean, it's been a while since I got a vehicle, but when I go to get insurance, I will call them from wherever I'm at and say, I need insurance. How much is it going to be? They tell me right on the spot. And then I ask for the insurance to be faxed right there. And then when I leave, it's because I know that if I leave and I don't have insurance, something's going to happen to me. Okay. So um, when it's effective is important to know. And, you know, that could be on the other end, too. Something lapses, you don't know it's lapsed, and then something happens. Uh, and, and as it mentions in the bottom one, it might be a condition <coughs> in the contract. Once you pay the premium, then you will have insurance in effect. Or once you pass the physical examination. It's one thing to disclose certain things on the application, but you need to pass a physical exam in some cases. Now, coinsurance. If you knew how bad I was at math, you'd know that I won't ask you this on a quiz. But since you don't know, yeah, I won't ask you. But this, and this is, what page is that? Uh, 682. 682 still, kind of stuck there. So on page 682, they kind of give you a, a, a math example of, of co-insurance. Uh, it says, it starts out on this slide, if an owner insures a property for at least 80% of, why wouldn't somebody insure their property for less than? Yeah, why would they do that? <laughs> yes, you're darn right, because earlier I said, sometimes you pay in, you never get anything out. Why pay so much if there's a risk that you won't actually have a total loss? So why not make your premiums cheaper? Well, if you do and then you do have a loss, maybe you won't be able to recover as much. So you take the amount of insurance, you divide it by the uh, co-insurance percentage, which is, in this case, in this example, 80% times whatever the property value is. And if you divide that all out, you'll get what you'll actually be able to recover um, under these type of clauses. In other words, the owner is responsible for the difference themselves. So yeah, this is that exhibit. And um, I will probably either have some statement and then you'll go, oh, that looks familiar. That sounds true. But watch and make sure that the statement matches up with the type of clause. Or I might have a scenario and then list these different type of clauses and you have to pick the right one. So make sure you know the different types of clauses and what they mean, how to differentiate between them. So an anti-lapse clause, basically it's that idea of if you did make a payment for some reason, you'd have some type of grace period before your insurance policy would lapse, whether it's auto or whatever. Sometimes this is something you can control, sometimes it's, it's not... Um, I had a situation where an employer um, overpaid me, which is easy, um, but <laughs> thank you, I got thank you. <laughs> and so the next pay period, instead of taking out what they overpaid me, they took out my entire paycheck and what they overpaid me, because apparently just paying me anything was overpaying. <laughs> and um, my wife called me, she says, you know, we're bouncing checks. Like, how is that possible? I just looked at our checking account. It's fine, and I just got paid. She says, well, <laughs> better look into that. You just got paid thing. <laughs> and um, apparently, they were authorized to put in amounts and take out what they put in, but nothing different. So instead of letting me know and working something out, they just sucked out everything they put in and then corrected it later. But anyway, the reason I'm telling that story is because meanwhile, back on the farm, the insurance company wasn't get paid. Yeah, it is ranch, that's right. Um, you know, anybody, money coming in, no money coming in. Money's still going out, that didn't work so well. So um, luckily I had a grace period. Appraisal clause. I won't tell you who that employer was. Um, an appraisal clause, you know, you think of appraisal, like determining the value of something, could be on the front end, tail end, could be 
you need to insure something and you need to come to some type of agreement as to how much it's worth. I mentioned that whole ring example earlier. Don't mention that to my wife. Um, or on the other end, if you get a loss, right? That, um, you know, how much is the loss? Anybody ever had that situation come up, been in an accident or something, and question about, you know, they don't necessarily take your word for it. They want to have some kind of appraiser or somebody take a look at it. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the courts even pay you. Yeah, sometimes. Um, but if that doesn't work out and there's some type of disagreement, if you look closely at most insurance policies, there's an arbitration clause which says if you have a disagreement with the insurer, uh, usually you don't take that to court. You try to settle that with them or go through some neutral third party. We mentioned incontestability earlier, you know, a clause that says that um, after a certain period of time, the insurance company shouldn't be able to go back and contest the original statements made in the application. Is that a popular thing? Yeah. It's a popular thing for insured people to want in their insurance contract, sometimes required by law. You know, that at some point you shouldn't, you know, the idea that you can't wait forever to bring a cause of action or to ra raise a legal defense. After a certain point, you shouldn't just try to avoid paying all claims by claiming it was something. You know, at that point, you shouldn't be relying on things that were made. Um, that's why I said sometimes they make it part of the contract, and if you committed fraud in entering into the contract, they might ask for uh, to be able to avoid their obligations under the contract. Multiple insurance. I don't know if anyone's had this come up. I Each year, I have to, what do they call it, open enrollment for insurance here. And um, one of the things they ask is, do I have any other insurance and what sources and what does it cover? Um, so you might have multiple insurance policies that could kick in in any given situation, right? What's the general rule about how much you can get? You know, we talk about in terms of remedies and other areas. You know, you shouldn't be made more than whole, right? So um, you shouldn't be able to recover for the same thing from two different contracts. Um, and if there's something that some other company might cover, then one insurance company probably doesn't want to pay at all. All right, so cancellation. I think of this kind of like at-will employment. Like you could still quit your insurance company, but for them it's a little more, a little more to it. Like putting in notice in writing that they're going to cancel in, in compliance with the terms of the insurance policy and law. Now, you might be able to get out of a contract. It might have some ramifications, right? You might know the difference between whole life and term life. Anybody have life insurance? Term expires. Right. So, well, doesn't it all at some yeah. point? Um, so, yeah, often terms for a term. Right, and often term is paying in, saving nothing, and you're not going to see it. Versus whole life is often some kind of savings component built into it. And so, depending on where you're at in that, um, if you get out of it, you might suffer a loss or be some penalty for that. So there's this um, idea of good faith, and uh, if for some reason an insurance company doesn't uh, follow that, then um, there might be an action against them for acting in bad faith. And, th and that could be everything from not paying claim that you're entitled to receive a benefit from to just delaying for a long period of time. And, you know, as we've been through Hurricane Katrina and other big disasters, some people have had some real issues with how long it takes to get claims paid. You never know when mayhem's going to come along. It took me a while to get why the guy's so beat up. I'm like, why do they get such a nasty <laughs> looking beat up guy to do those commercials, right? Um, so we mentioned defenses against payment earlier. Here's some examples of, of what um, the insurance company might raise to an otherwise valid contract. Fraud, something you said was... Um, <coughs> A misrepresentation done intentionally to induce them to enter into a contract, and it mentions 
giving them your wrong age or providing information uh, that was inaccurate or not providing information you, you should have. Smoking is a big one, right? No one wants to admit that they smoke when it comes to insurance, at least. Um, and they might later argue that you were. Uh, concurrent causation. <coughs> concurrent meaning at the same time. Causation is meaning caused. Put it together. Maybe there are multiple factors that cause a loss. And then the question becomes whether it's something that the contract covered. Earlier I was mentioning that example of homes that were destroyed and somebody claiming, well, it was flooded, therefore I should recover. And then the insurance company saying, yes, but it was destroyed by hurricane before it flooded. Okay. So there's those questions that come up in terms of was the actual reason for the loss.